Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's weather forecast, I will be covering a deluge of rain and snow across the West Coast and the southwestern United States from today through Wednesday tomorrow. And then severe weather appears likely with all modes of severe weather possible, including tornadoes here overnight on Thursday into Friday. Then the active weather pattern we've been seeing does continue through the very end of March here. We'll be going over those details later later on in this video. But if you guys are not yet subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below the video so you get all of my daily weather forecast updates each and every morning at 9 a.m. Again, we cover southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics during tropical weather season. I'll also be coming out with educational weather videos here later on this week here and beyond. So definitely hit the subscribe button down below, everyone. I definitely appreciate that. And also slap that like button down below as well. Again, it helps to get all of this weather information out to as many people as possible. Possible, the more likes we get on this video. So I definitely appreciate all the new subscribers, all the likes on the videos. And now let's get into the weather forecast because we got a very important weather forecast to bring you guys here today. We have a strong trough off the West Coast here. And you can see with the brighter colors, this is a pretty potent trough here. So that we're going to be keeping an eye on this, especially again across the Southwest and the West Coast, especially for California here on the West Coast. It's going to be bringing in a lot of moisture here, this time a little bit farther south. So you see the darker greens here over Southern California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico. Those are our precipitable water anomalies that are a good two, three, even closing in on four inches above climatology here. So we definitely are seeing that. And you see that here going even into the day on Wednesday, tomorrow as well on March 22nd. However, we start to lessen some of the moisture as it starts to elongate across the Rockies. So with this moisture in play, we got more heavy rain and more snow in the higher elevation elevations across the west coast here including California and the desert southwest so if you live in places like Los Angeles a very decent rain setup for you here going through the noon time frame and then that really continues going into this evening all these higher elevations Salt Lake City back here toward the Reno region even down here to the Sierra Nevadas we're going to be adding up snowfall yet again through this evening that continues through the better half of our Wednesday morning and then starts to slowly shut off with our precipitation going through that Wednesday evening time frame as more of that snow starts to push across the central and southern Rockies. So places like southern Montana, Wyoming, getting down through western Colorado and even northwestern portions there of New Mexico getting through Wednesday evening with some of that snowfall. Then we're taking you across the upper Midwest and northern plains. We got a little smaller system up here bringing some uh, snow showers going through the afternoon here today. We have some snow showers pushing in just near and north of the Rapid City region here into South Dakota and on up into western North Dakota by 3 o'clock this afternoon. That pushes off to the east seeing more moderate snow bands setting up up here toward the Bismarck region getting up here toward Fargo. We definitely have to watch out for some lowering in their visibility. Farther south, maybe a mix of sleet and snow here into western portions of Minnesota and then farther south from there, it's going to be too warm so we're going to see more rainfall through this evening. That continues to push eastward here into the Arrowhead of Minnesota, northern portions of Minnesota there, western Ontario and then down through portions of of Lake Superior, western portions of UP of Michigan, and north woods of Wisconsin with some of that snow by our morning commute on Wednesday. And then again, that exits the United States into Ontario and Quebec, Canada with that storm track as we go through Wednesday evening. So looking at the total snowfall from both those systems combined here now through Thursday morning, it does look like we see a decent snow out here to the west across the mountainous regions here into the Sierra Nevadas, back into the Rockies, and then the, of course the northern plains through the Dakotas northern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan up here and around the Lake Superior regions, we def definitely see at least a few inches of snow from that system going through that Thursday time frame. But looking at the southwest and the Sierra Nevadas here, our seasonal snowfall accumulation all the way back from uh, now, all the way back to September 30th of 2022, we've had over 600 inches here uh, up here in the portions of the highest elevations of the Sierra Nevadas and, and in particular 600 and 7.9 inches in a couple of these areas and we're going to be adding up another two three four feet to this as we go through the next 48 to 72 hours so definitely going to be seeing some decent snows yet again adding to those totals that we've seen on the year not only though for the sierra nevadas but also for much of eastern uh, nevada here into places like the salt lake city region western colorado a lot of these higher elevations will be seeing over a foot if not over two feet of snow 
now going through that Thursday time frame. Moving up across the Pacific Northwest now, uh, many of these areas sink six plus inches, even some fo uh, one foot totals up here, even in towards portions of western Wyoming, eastern Idaho, getting into southern portions there. Montana, maybe a couple of inches of snow. Northern Nevada, maybe a few inches of snow there as well. And then that smaller system up here across the Dakotas, northern Minnesota here into northern Wisconsin, mainly a three to six inch snowfall event, but maybe some isolated seven inch totals. Um, so we'll definitely be watching out for that going through that Thursday time frame. Might have to break out the shovels and the snow blowers and even the plows out there across these areas going through that time frame. And again, with the travel out there, do take it easy. We have those minor to moderate impacts. And then as you go up in elevation across the Rockies and across the Sierra Nevada mountain range here into California, you're going to see more of those major to extreme travel impacts. So do take it slow out there. Definitely stay safe. And again, looking at the rainfall accumulation from the system, we're going to start to see more of that heavy rain approaching portions of the West Coast there, and including coastal California getting into the desert Southwest here. And in particular, the Los Angeles region, we could be picking up two to as much as four inches of rain here for uh, Los Angeles, down here towards uh, San Diego, Tijuana, Mexico, getting all the way up toward the San Francisco region, even some heavier rainfall down here toward Vegas, or even portions of Southern Utah, Flagstaff, farther south toward the Phoenix region, at least the northern side of Phoenix, we could be seeing one to as much as three inches of rain through Thursday. And this is going to cause some flooding concerns. So from today into tomorrow, we're watching two areas for flooding. Our main area here with that red shaded color, that's a moderate risk for flash flooding. This does include the downtown area of Los Angeles and then down here across the San Diego region. And then a secondary area with a slight risk for flash flooding near and just north of Phoenix there into central Arizona as we head through the day today and into the day on Wednesday. Then as we go into Wednesday and Thursday time frame, we still have those, both those areas with a lingering marginal risk for flash flooding with some of that runoff and some slight additional rainfall chances going through the middle and toward the end of the week. So we'll continue to watch the flash flooding threat across those areas. But as the storm system and its energy starts to push farther to the east, we're going to see this cross-country storm take shape, and we're going to see a heavy rain setup here. We're going to have more of a stationary boundary try to set up across the Ohio Valley and the Missouri Valley on Wednesday. To the north of the boundary, we're going to see some snowfall with the colder air. Right along and south of the boundary, we're going to have more showers storms and even some severe weather going through the middle and end of this week. So set, uh, showing you the setup on Wednesday, again, you can see clearly where that boundary sets up here. Right along the boundary, temperatures will be averaging around the middle 50s. South of the boundary, we have all those warm, humid conditions. Temperatures will be warming up into the 60s, 70s, even middle 80s down here across much of Texas into western Oklahoma. But north of the boundary, we're going to see more snow showers and wintry precipitation with temperatures into the 20s and 30s. So looking at the setup, how, however, particular with the severe weather, we have the dew points. Again, we have the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Dew points will be rising through the 60s and approaching 70 degrees at times in coastal California here on Wednesday, making it very sticky out there. And again, starting at 3 o'clock on Wednesday afternoon, very quiet up here across the Missouri Valley and the Illinois Valley. But as we go through the mid-evening hours, we'll start to spark some showers and storms, at least on an isolated uh, coverage here across the Chicagoland area, northern Indiana, back and toward the Quad Cities here in Davenport, Iowa. And then, of course, you see the snowfall on the colder side of the system up across South Dakota here toward Rapid City, getting over here towards uh, uh, southern portions of Minnesota, near and south of the Twin Cities. And then that continues as we head into the overnight hours. You see these storms popping up here across the Illinois Valley, eastern Iowa, places like that. These could be elevated hail type of uh, storms. We have more hail in the uh, we have colder air coming in from the north we have warmer air moving in from the south and right along that boundary we usually get some hailers here with this setup so we'll continue to watch that after midnight here on thursday otherwise more snow again for places like minneapolis st paul eau claire wisconsin lacrosse as we go in towards the 3 a.m time frame and then going on thursday that cold front starts to move slowly to the south and kind of setting up again that stationary boundary here from north texas all the way up through the ohio valley and parts of interior New England. And again, we have that parent system with that trough starting to kick across portions of the desert southwest into West Texas on Thursday. 
And this will start to set up more of an isolated to scattered type of severe weather setup on Thursday, especially overnight. There's a marginal and slight risk for severe storms in the dark green with the slight risk in the yellow here. This covers mainly the Red River here into southern Oklahoma through portions of central Texas. This includes the DFW Metroplex on westward toward Wichita Falls, the Denton region, Sherman, Texas here, and just near and south of the Oklahoma City metro region. All modes of severe weather will be possible, but I do suspect damaging winds and large hail will be the main modes with an isolated brief tornado possible, especially here with the unfavorable time of day. I'm not expecting a lot of tornadoes with this setup, but you see a noon time frame here on Thursday, a couple of thunderstorms sparking here from the Tulsa region on up through Joplin, Missouri, places like that up there towards Springfield, maybe some heavier rain up here across the Ohio Valley. As we get deeper into the day on Thursday, so say six, seven, eight o'clock, we're going to start to see more showers. Showers and storms develop more numerously here across the Indianapolis region, southern portions of Illinois, and getting through the Missouri Valley here into southern Missouri, and some heavier, stronger storms possibly lining up there into the Tulsa region, and then starting to develop that farther back to the southwest toward the Red River and toward Wichita Falls by 6 o'clock. Then this will slowly pivot its way farther to the east, but again, training of thunderstorms moving over the same areas will start to lead to more flash flooding concerns for places like Ohio, Indiana. Indiana, Kentucky, down through southern Illinois, southern Missouri, into northwestern Arkansas, while the strong storm risk will actually stay across Oklahoma into north Texas. So now after midnight, uh, getting into Friday morning, we'll start to deal with more showers and storms that could turn severe into the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, Sherman, Texas, places like that. That continues through the morning hours and your morning commute on Friday at 7 a.m., again with more flash flooding potential and heavy rain to the north and the strong storm risk a little farther to the south. So looking at the heavy rainfall threat. The total rainfall accumulation just for Thursday, March 23rd, and Friday, March 24th, you see a very narrow zone right along that stationary boundary or that slow-moving cold front in the purple shade of color here. That's at least two inches worth of rain in some of these areas. We could even see localized amounts over two inches of rain here if we have some heavier thunderstorms than some of the models do show. And that does cause concern for a widespread zone for flash flooding from western Pennsylvania all the way southwest to the DFW W Metroplex here into northern and northeast Texas on Thursday into Friday with even a slight risk extending from western Ohio through Indiana, Illinois, western portions of Kentucky, Missouri, getting into northern Arkansas and eastern Oklahoma. We have to watch out for some scattered flash flooding there. Then on Friday, that stationary boundary starts to move a little bit farther to the south. And again, a lot of these same areas will start to see more heavy rain to the south of the boundary, more unstable environment here, especially ahead of an advancing cold front moving from west to east across the Arquitex and we're going to set up that parent trough pushing farther to the east here. We have strong southwesterlies in the mid-level here uh, in the mid-level jet stream and that's where we see the severe weather threat here. As that trough starts to kick off to the east, we're intersecting some of that warm humid air from the Gulf of Mexico. We have the slight risk for severe storms here across portions of the western Tennessee Valley here into western Tennessee, northwestern Alabama, much of Mississippi, eastern Arkansas getting down into Louisiana and far east East Texas, places like Shreveport, Jackson, Mississippi, Memphis here, and maybe up there toward the Nashville region as well on Friday. And I do, I do suspect the Storm Prediction Center, as this gets closer, will upgrade parts of this region, especially from northern Louisiana into northern and central Mississippi um, is the area of concern where we could see an enhanced risk upgrade from the Storm Prediction Center as this does get closer, because you do see a strong squall line of storms producing widespread damage winds, large hail, and perhaps a few QLCS tornadoes along the leading edge of this line of storms. Of course, we got to watch out for storms that do develop ahead of the main line. Those are called supercells, and that could happen as we go through the evening and overnight hours going into Saturday morning. A little bit of a deformation snow band setting up here across southern and central Wisconsin back into eastern and central Iowa from Des Moines through Prairie du Chien, Madison, Wisconsin, on up there toward Green Bay. Not much to deal with with that setup here. We'll get to that in a moment, but then that spread up there into southeastern Canada with the snow line, but we start to eat away at some of the precipitation across the eastern United States on Saturday afternoon as this cold front becomes a little less defined by that time frame. So looking at the snowfall potential, again, these are our potential snowfall accumulations. This will likely change a little bit, but you do see a general one to three inch of snow event here across portions of Iowa, southern and central Wisconsin, far northern Illinois, just west of the Chicagoland area, and then getting across the upper Great Lakes into southern portions of Ontario, Canada. 
uh, and again, I do suspect this is going to be a little bit overdone because the temperatures will be so marginal. We're going to have upper 20s to mid 30s for temperatures up here, and the days prior will actually be in the 40s and 50s. So I think the ground will be too warm for a lot of this to accumulate. So I think maybe a dusting to an inch out of this across a lot of these areas I did show you from Iowa through Wisconsin and Michigan and Northern Illinois will be probably more of a dusting to an inch of accumulation with that system. But looking through the rest of the month into at least the first couple of days in April, going through April 3rd, it does look like the setup remains the same. We got a trough here coming in off the West Coast, more below normal temperatures underneath that trough, especially with all the unsettled weather. And then a little bit of a ridge across the Gulf Coast states into Florida here, that will continue. So if you live in Dallas, Fort Worth, over here toward Jackson, Mississippi, Tampa Bay, these areas, Atlanta, you guys will be warmer than average getting toward the end of March and into the first few days of April. And again, it does look very active. As that trough moves in, another trough toward the end of March into early April across the West Coast. We'll see more above average precipitation there. A little bit of some drying out across West Texas, the Panhandle of Texas near Amarillo, Lubbock, and then getting back toward the Albuquerque region and then on up into Kansas and Oklahoma. Unfortunately, for some of the areas that desperately need the rainfall, will be drier than normal. And then again, that secondary trough we're watching this week, that will be kicking out across the Northeast and off the East Coast by the time we get into the end of the week here into next weekend. And that's where we'll see above average precipitation from the Great Lakes down through the Mid-Atlantic, the Tennessee Valley, and the Northeast going through April 3rd. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. If you guys like this video, press the thumbs up down below. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. A great rest of your week, and I will see you all in the next video.